Thunderhead lift deal. If I say we, I am the only one doing it. Uh, they have a stipulation. Got to be 18 or older, safety regulations. You know, and I understand. So the crazy kids can't go. Crazy Nana don't like heights. And well, my crazy son's just, well, he's crazy. So there you go. So we're going to just do this and y'all going to. Get to go with us. So All riders on. must have upper body strength. Right, we're on our way up. We go to, to the left hill. Right in the seat during accelerated right and left turns. Quick How tall is this coaster? Tyler. How yes, tall is this coaster? I know it's a hundred foot drop. I figured you knew. Yeah. He usually knows stats better than I do. <laughs> Enjoy your trip on the wildest ride in the woods. Just kind of just walking along, just taking, you know. Under. She won't ever do it. She rode from the. Uh, just out for Saturday morning stroll. It's 100.4 height for the 100, uh, for the 100 foot drop. So you want to only point four off the ground, huh? Cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I don't know. Even if I see it. All right, here we go. Thank you. Lead and supervisor up here for years. So, what year was that? Huh? What year was that? It opened in 04. Yep. So, yep. So, what we'll do is, of course, trying to get as many people and not being so bunched up. So, we'll, that's why we split y'all up. So, we'll go up, answer any questions on our way up. We do have a couple, like two or three more groups. So, we kind of. So we gotta open the ride. So it is kind of a little bit different walking on these things. Uh, if you've never walked on them, you kind of kind of get used. To it. Well, that kind of I, I kind of like fall in between. You know, my heel falls back. Oh, yeah. Every day. Yep. They walk the entire track every day um, for pre opening inspections. Um, or I don't. But <laughs> Air maintenance guys do. Sure. Do they grease this track every day or? They do not. Um, so it's on a really it's as needed. Okay. It's not a grease. It's a um, it's an oil they put on it um, because of course you have steel track and uh, steel wheels, so you need some type of lubricant for right. it. Um, and we can watch it just by watching the speeds of the vehicle to know you know it's starting to need some oil. We also know when to oil it and when not to because if you put a uh, abundant amount of oil on it and uh, then it rains, then it makes it even more slick because you have more lubricant. Gotcha. So then it goes too fast. So again, it's it, after all these years, it's become kind of second nature to the guys, but uh, it is uh, part of it. Um, of course, this is just the standard uh, coaster chain. It's actually the same co the same chain it's on the Tennessee Tornado, same size. Uh, of course, this is your ARB teeth. Um, this chain here is actually the third chain since the ride's been here. This is brand new. It was first season for this chain. Uh, they last anywhere between six to eight seasons. We measure them. There's a measurement that you measure across so many lengths, uh, lengths and then you get your length, uh, your tolerances. Everybody's afraid of heights. Now's the time to bring that up. 
about how long would it take to walk the full track? So, to do the entire track, it's usually about, uh, about six man hours. So, but of course, there's two of them, and they come in and depend on, you know, the, uh, what's going on, but for the most part, they usually try to get here four to five hours before the park opens. Okay, this is weird. <laughs> There's your baby. Where did I put him from? It's a little plastic baby. So we did that as a joke to see who would find it. You, Yay, you found the prize. it. Well, you got the prize. Now this wood is slick, so kind of put it yourself up again. It's like the kind of baby you find on steam cake. put a mark or paint the end of them so they know what if they've been okay. tightened or not. Wow, that's going to be quite a project too. It is a project. Too late to change my mind. <laughs> You're good. You can make it. Yeah. Well, we're almost there. Well, we made it to the top. You just look at that view. <laughs> so, thinking back to that, you may know, may not know about the ride. Um, this ride it was built by Great Coasters International from uh, Sunbury, Pennsylvania. It was designed by Mike Boodley. Uh, this is Mike's, actually Mike's last coaster design and then he retired. He did uh, spend quite a bit of time working on the flying turn at the Noble Zip. Uh, and he, 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 he followed that, that saga. Dick uh, brought him in after about four years of renovation. But it, we started construction in 2003, um, and uh, we 
opened in the spring of 2004. Uh, it's technically a twister design, uh, but it has a lot of very signature elements to it that made GCI what GCI is, twisting first drop, and what Mike Moodley is, twisting first drop, high bank curves. Um, before RMC started to build the steel track, these were among the steepest bank turns anywhere. Um, so this ride itself, uh, as I said, opened in 04, so it's, uh, I guess, technically the 15th season. Um, GCI considers this a two-season coaster. So uh, for the length of our season and the weather that we get, they consider every season that we run two years for them. So in their estimation, it's a 30-year-old coaster. Uh, but it's in tremendous shape. Barry's guys do an incredible job of maintaining it. I'm sure he told you that our guys are on it every morning from the time the sun peaks over the ridge until, uh, uh, and there's a wrench on every bolt on this ride at least once a year, most of them twice a year. Uh, everything's torqued and retorqued to specifications. Uh, and we're currently in the midst of a retracking program for the ride. Uh, this is the first major retracking that we've done on this ride since we opened. Um, so Barry, explain that. Yeah, so you'll see all the new wood yeah. in this turn here. Mm -hmm. um, so on average, we've been probably spending about 125000 a year on just, just regular maintenance. Um, so we knew that the track was, like Pete said, was 15 year old. So we have committed to doing right now we're at about six to eight hundred thousand a year um, and that has to happen in two months which is uh, really tough uh, so what we are doing though to uh, help the longevity of the ride is the top two laminates um, we are converting it from treated wood to a wood called epe um, it is a brazilian hardwood if you look it up it's considered uh, it's basically steel. Um, you can't you can't drive a nail in it. You have to uh, pre-drill for your nails. Um, it has the same fire rating as steel, as far as uh, NFPA says. Um, it, it it weighs about twice, well, close to twice as much as treated wood, as pine. Uh, it uh, it's so dense it doesn't float. Yeah, there, there's yeah it's there. Well, with the more weight, what about the supports and the structure of the... They're good with it. Okay. GCI is actually is who recommended this. They're actually the ones that's coming out and doing a lot of the work with us in conjunction with our our maintenance, and we also hire a local contractor also. Okay. So um, probably about to do these projects, you're looking 20, 25 men on the job every day wow. to, to get it done in that length of time. So, but, uh, and, and it is, it's taken on a lot. Um, and, and you can see from, with Wildwood Grove, uh, we have limited access with cranes also. So a lot of it um, is manhandled in. So, uh, uh, but, but we feel like it's, we've got that turn and that was one of our big ones that we had to do. So uh, if it continues, we should be done We'll have three more winners of that uh, to be really caught up. This, uh, this coaster has, I guess, technically four trains, but three, three, three rolling stock trains. The two the original two that came with this ride, and then uh, the two trains that were on the Ozark Wildcat uh, in Branson. Um, and after the Ozark Wildcat closed, took us a couple of years to get them here, but we got them here. And so that allows Barry's guys to have a continual process of, of uh, tearing down trains, non-destructive testing, rebuilding trains, so that we have a new train in rotation on a regular basis. Um, and uh, I mean, it's a great process. As, as Barry said, with as short as our off season is now, uh, when he and I both started back when we were 
much younger. Um, the uh, you know we we used to uh, do all of that winter maintenance when we closed, and we just can't do that anymore. Um, and so when you uh, to get a ride like this ready, they literally tear the trains completely apart. Uh, they're X-rayed. Um, they check to make sure there's no structural issues or any uh, anything with it. They replace all wear parts and they replace all fasteners. So when it goes back together, it's basically uh, factory fresh. And we do it to the to the manufacturer's uh, specifications. And then we have a third party inspector come in and inspect the trains. In addition to all of the non-destructive testing we did ourselves. So. Um, it, it's it's a great process now to be able to do that and just kind of over the hill right over there is where Barry's shop is where they're able to there's a warehouse shop that's over there where they're able to do all this work off park so that they're not focused you know they're not running hither and yon between rides they're able to focus on the trains over there so. what, what's the, the, the sprinkler it was. It was. Uh, that was also. That was also a Boodley design. It was at a park called Celebration City, that was only open for a couple of years. Um, that's the one that got away. Yeah, and that is. Uh, but that's a. Uh, that was a good ride. Really, uh, a Small ride, but a good ride. What are oh, um, rides maintenance? I have. 52, um, but that doesn't include, um, of course, my management staff, that doesn't include the train maintenance, and it doesn't include tram auto, because all that falls under me also. Oh, wow. Uh, total staff, I have 82. Wow. So, what's the sprinkler for? Actually, um, during the fall, we have a lot of wasps up here, oh, okay. so we turn yeah. those on. Um, they're, they're called paper wasps. Mm -hmm. and they really like them. A lot of parks have that problem. They do. <laughs> we go to Bush Gardens in the fall and they've always got mm -hmm. bees. If you look up paper wasp, okay. it says this is the stuff that disrupts. Uh -huh. Roller coasters is on the list. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, Kennedy Space Center or at the shuttle launches, uh -huh. they have the same issue. They've actually canceled launches because of it. So, oh, okay. And, and but yeah, everybody has that same issue. So we've, we've tried a few different things to combat it, trying to keep the rides running longer. Okay. You know, if you turn around and you look straight across the hill on the other side, which is Lightning Ride, see the house on top of the left? Uh -huh. So that's a bee house. That is uh -huh. one that takes the structure higher, and those metal panels also heat up, which is what the wasps are looking for. And so they swarm up on top of that instead of on the track level. Okay. So we have tried. We're trying to beast the folks is. Yeah. Okay. Well, we, I mean, I mean we've, them, we've tried everything. Bad. Water, water. I mean, we have tried. Uh, you know, we, we've talked about chemicals, but the issue is you can't do it in the proximity of gas. Right. And, uh, and so it's just you yeah, got to deal with it. And we realize it's pain because. You know, Wild Eagle is one that is also affected, and folks will come to the park and there'll be a sign out that says they're down with the bees. Yeah. And, you know, and it's hard for people to understand that's what is. That's they're like, just go take the hive down. Well, there's not a hive. <laughs> <laughs> what is the height of the slip jump? The drop is uh, 102, I think, 101, 102. Um, so I'm not sure how far we're off the ground now. I probably that knew. I probably knew it one. I probably knew it one time. <laughs> okay. off the top of my head. Just wondering. You know, my nun coaster riding people. I send them pictures like this to scare them to death. <laughs> and I tell them how high I was. All right. Anything else? It scares me. We'll get another group up. All right. Hey, if hang on just one second. If if you all will go ahead and start down, and if you all want to get a couple pictures without them in it, then. Uh, Yeah, just Let me get out of the way. Oh, you have to do that. I mean, the biggest, the biggest thing was down the lines. Just in here. I appreciate that. Primarily wind load. It's not higher than that. And we've looked at it for a little bit. All right.
y'all can give you quite a few. Uh, we got two more groups. Okay. All right. If you want to ride the ride, then. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to go back down now. Been up here almost 11 minutes now. I tell you what, it don't seem this steep when you're riding it. <laughs> it doesn't, does it? <laughs> so now we get to go back down. Oh, yeah. so this is definitely a different um, aspect. Oh. Yeah. 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 Two cell phones lost on my ride. I saw the first one, Tom Crawford. Most people ride a roller coaster. We're walking with them. Turn it back around here. So there we go. We're going to walk back down this lift hill now and uh, try not to fall. <laughs> Pretty steep. Looks well, like the park might be open. I see a lot of people coming in now. That's a thick chain. I struggle with bicycle chains. I can imagine putting this one on. <laughs> Crazy pop. Oh yeah. <laughs> About halfway now. <laughs> yeah. And you look close up. Uh oh. <laughs> I guess he's trekking a railroad track. It was hot up there though, wasn't it? It was. After that little rain this morning, I got humid already. Yeah. But it was worth it. That's the picture I want. Long way to the top. <laughs> Get my work out of this one. Oh yeah. You're making how many trips? About three or four, I'll imagine. Yeah. Yeah. You get to go home after this, right? <laughs> <laughs> he said, yeah, it's Saturday. It's time to go watch cartoons. I can't tell you how cool this was. I really appreciate oh, you doing no this. Yeah. Very yes. nice. Uh, this is like 
I really enjoyed this. Even though I'm now he tells you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can tell, don't worry. Oh, I got you. <laughs> Did it have something to do with gripping the handrail as tight as I could? We're just out for a Saturday morning stroll on a roller coaster. You know, for the most people that's afraid of heights, this coaster doesn't bother them as much as some of the other ones. I love has, coasters. Has the, well, but like, if you walk them, though, when they have the grip strut steps, yeah. then you can see the ground. And people... Kind of like Wild Eagle? Wild Eagle, Tornado, those. We've had, uh, I've done behind St. Clark where, like, people have actually sat down and, like, scooted back down the lift. They're really? Like, this is as far as I can go. <laughs> Yeah, I'm done. So, which is fine. I mean, I'd rather you do it slow than get to the top and realize and, and that. freeze. Yeah. Are we are back at the station. So this trip, this vehicle chassis actually was on the uh, Wildcat. This in oh, okay. Missouri. Okay. Well, there you have it. We just walked up the top of Thunderhead Lift Hill for the very first time. How'd y'all like it? Woo! Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Different. That was different. Yeah. We're used to riding up. a lot up. of fun. Yeah, <laughs> used to riding up. It's a long walk. I like riding it better. Yeah. yeah. Definitely get a workout. That's, That's right. right. At least you get the breeze, too. Uh, but that was some beautiful views up there. Yeah. Well, you can see Mystery Mine, Wildwood Grove. Yeah. Awesome. Let's go find something else to get into. What y'all think? Yeah, let's Some food. Breakfast. Food. Okay, breakfast.